and we're back. Welcome back to all of you uh, to this second deep dive session. Um, welcome to all the new participants joining us for this session right now. We are very happy to have you with us. Um, we hope you're well and enjoyed the program so far. With us is now also Philip Tinari, whose sprint you already just heard, Director and Chief Executive at the UCCA Center for Contemporary Art, joining us from Beijing. And Clementine Delis, Associate Curator of the KW Institute for Contemporary Art, Berlin, our first responder. We, if still, if you want to have a question, there are three ways to include them. Raise your hand through the, the webinar. You can find a button at the, at the bottom of your screen. Or if you prefer to ask your question directly through the chat, you can ask it directly on by typing it in, or you can also use our online form at campus.re-publica.com if you are following from our website or YouTube. So let's dive in. Clementine, I would like to ask you to give you the floor and ask for your first statement. And please unmute your microphone. Yeah. I'm unmuted. Perfect. Good evening, Philip. Thank you for your presentation. I was intrigued by the fact that you began by saying immediately that the future is not technology, it's not VR, it's not interactivity, it's something else. Uh, maybe we can get there. I think it's really important to try and uh, maybe even, even, even if it's quite difficult to understand exactly what the future will be, that we try and get there as quickly as possible and with as much imagination as possible. Um, you spoke about how UCCA Con uh, Museum of Contemporary Art or Contemporary Art Center, Center of Contemporary Art, how whilst it was established by a European, a Belgian, um, Guy Allens, became then not only a Chinese venue, but something that had undergone a form of decolonial process. So the, the fact that the management is now in the hands of the Chinese and or it's an international plus Chinese management in your, in, your, in your presentation, you seem to stress that the decolonial would have uh, not only a different feature within the Chinese context, but also within your center of contemporary art. And you suggest that the financial crisis in 2008, and now more recently COVID-19, the pandemic have both helped to stimulate the shift, maybe even to accelerate it. And you um, speak about the, the question of, uh, you give two examples, right, of how this has now begun to change the way that you're thinking about what you're doing in the space of, the UC, of um, your art center. And you speak also, like Kavita, about the question of best practices. And the first best practice that causes um, slight kind of vibe is that you managed to make an exhibition in eight weeks rather than planning it two to four years ahead, which is best practice, right? And uh, again, with another exhibition, the one of Elizabeth Payton, you show how it is actually possible to install virtually or at a remote, remote distance um, and how in a way this gives agency to the artwork that might not have been quite as in, or evoked in this particular way if you had had Elizabeth in the space installing with you. So that it changes in a way the way we're going to start looking at, art, at artworks. My question to you has really got to do with the relationship between capital and radical vulnerability as a museum director. And on the other hand, and quite actually quite parallel to that, internationalism and autonomy. You say uh, that you say, I quote, we are a space for an open human encounter. You say that you would like to build a network to create a community of contemporary art that exists as a string of institutions, but also as a digital community. And you mentioned that UCCA has a space called Dune, where it has a lot to do with the sea and the land and that you're creating a new location in Shanghai. So my questions are really to do with the we, the we in a kind of post-decolonial context as well that you mentioned. So how do you imagine the network? What about the ownership of the network? What about the decision-making, the, the maybe deviant best practices of decision-making? Could you tell us a bit about the patrons, the investors, sure. and 
compromises you have to deal with. So when you're speaking about we are a space for an open human encounter, who has the right to claim subjectivity in this museum or in this contemporary art center? And is there actually a form of decolonial that needs to take place that is perhaps actually hasn't even begun, that is more complex and site specific? Sure. Yeah, thank you. I mean, those are all um, very incisive and uh, fraught questions, as is this context and, uh, you know, as is the even the idea of being an American in China uh, on the most basic level at this you know, moment of decoupling and, um, and friction. Um, I guess to this question of the we, which I, I tend to use as this sort of shorthand uh, because I'm kind of working from a place of a lot of assumptions of having, you know, been become fluent in this language and functional in this culture and having been here for approaching 20 years with, uh, you know, a, a, a deep trajectory of research and encounter with, with them. Um, all kinds of people on the ground um and and yeah the process that i did outline was was a shift from you know a single owner uh with an acquisitive kind of urge and you know along with Uli sig kind of the other great collector of the 90s um at a moment before there were institutional actors or really major even economic actors in the contemporary art space in china um to something different and the something different you know is it's not just different from what it was before, but um, what you know, different from how things are in 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 your American context. Um, you know, this kind of basic assumption, at least the American context, which I is the one I know the next best, of you know, a board who can hold an institution in a public trust, kind of on behalf of the society, uh, is not really a, a model that that is viable here because the only organization uh, empowered to do that is the communist party. Um, and so in a strange way, private ownership becomes a proxy for public participation or for, I mean, of course it comes down to different definitions of the public, but this is getting to what I meant by a kind of open, uh, a more open space. You know, we strive to be the kind of place where you uh, as someone entering um are are not uh, the object of a political ideology and are not the object of a um a, a sort of advertising ideology or a commercial um a commercial program but rather are treated as you know a thinking individual who may um, engage with and draw their own conclusions from or, or make their own critiques of or find their own ways of engaging with what we, uh, as and I, there, I speak for the staff and the curators, and you know the best practices the different departments of the of the institution have decided to put forth um, for you. Um, so, who has the right to claim subjectivity? I mean, hopefully, as many people as possible. Unfortunately, not being a, a subsidized state institution, we do need to charge a, a ticket fee because that's sort of one of the main channels by which we survive. Something we try very adamantly to offset with all kinds of outreach programs to uh, different schools and different underserved communities uh, both near us but also in other parts of china through trying to send curricula and other other programs abroad um i i think in the end you know actually as much as the international or the global is starting to seem outdated or <laughs> I say in some ways, it's still something to be fought for in this particular context where I think the um, the basic urge is more towards a very uh, sinocentric narration of events. And so to kind of claim that space for internet for a kind of international dialogue and for um, a, a way of looking at the world and the art world that's grounded in Beijing or in a, a so-called Chinese perspective, but that also has room for lots of other things, um, seems to be what our viewers, you know, through the research we've done on them, tend to value uh, most and what we're able to offer. Okay, I would like to take one question that came in through our online tool at campus.dream-publica.com. Um, and how far did the behavior of audience or the participants at the, at the exhibition change so yeah how did how what is your experience with that uh, As you're trying I'm to say to include more uh social groups i think 
Um, I, I mean, it's, you know, it's, it's, that's, that's an ongoing um, campaign. I mean, that's something one can always do more of, but, um, you know, we try to come at it from the perspective of raising awareness, but also from very specific engagements with, with, with different groups and constituencies. Um, you know, just to give a very small example, uh, we have a, a, a docent, a woman in her 70s, who's become something of an internet sensation because people in China are, are simply not used to individuals uh, belonging to that generation, people with direct experience of the kind of 49 to 79, you know, more socialist period, even being interested in or engaged with contemporary art. Whereas, you know, that's a demographic that in a lot of other contexts is kind of at the core of the uh, the docent uh, constituency, if you will. So I think there's there's a certain way in which um, you're trying to create unexpected situations and ask people to examine them. And we have one question coming in through our online tool uh, by Andreas, who was asking, how was your working experience different in this quick exhibition making? I mean, it's, it's uh, and this is a bit what Kavita was saying as well, but I mean, to, to sort of suspend uh, things that are in other moments taken as absolute requirements can be absolutely liberating, um, which is not to say that you you lower your standards, just that you try to meet them in different ways. Uh, and you know, as we're using Zoom now for a panel discussion, a lot can be done to install a show over, over a video chat. Um, if we start to think about our, you know, lower carbon footprint future, it may mean that to install a, a video installation or uh, other kinds of work as well, one might not need to send a few assistants or couriers to uh, around the world specifically for that purpose. But maybe there are, you know, we can be a bit more intentional about the ways that we use international travel in the future. Um, and I guess, you know, connected to that, what I was also, what I was really trying to say about, about the Peyton show uh, it, not that it wouldn't have been better to have her there in person, but the, the idea that the object is somehow um, the privileged subject, right? Is the object is the one that can cross the border and the one that um, that that can instantiate itself ac across uh, context kind of gives it even even more power. And, and that was definitely also true as we made uh, meditations in an emergency. Maybe Clementine, to get back to your um, point, maybe you can also describe how you try to make less CO2 uh, uh, co and try to be more sustainable in your ways of making an exhibition and in your way of curating. So for, I mean, I, I'm associate curator at KW and actually what I'm doing is um, backstage. So I'm not curating an exhibition. I'm bringing together people from different disciplines because we need to talk. We need to understand what these venues are, are going to do in the, in the future. Maybe they're not going to just produce exhibitions. Maybe art, art will, have, will require a different platform, a different type of engagement. And perhaps we are going to enter into a, a moment when the I don't know, the, the slight chaos caused by COVID and the, and the effects on the market and the effects on the consumer-led um, distribution of museums in the world today will require for smaller venues to provide sheltering structures for artists and people who are associated with their role in society and their changing role in society to come together. So I was very interested in your idea of this network of smaller, or maybe not smaller, but this network of UCCAs within China, because I'm curious, and maybe you could respond to that, Philip, to understand scale, the parameter of a project like this. Are we talking about uh, something that I'm working on with Azun Wagbobu in Lagos? Are we talking about a home museum, something very small and domestic? Or are we talking about a museum which is the size of, I don't know, um, a forest. You know, what are the, what are the, what is the parameter of the museum of the future? Maybe you can take, make your answer very brief as we have only 30 seconds left in this very interesting conversation. I'm sorry. Sure, I think, um, I think one should, should be able to play with scale in different ways. You know, you see in Beijing is 10,000 square meters, you see it doing is, is 500. Um, and Shanghai will be uh, uh, 4,000. Uh, so it's, um, 
And, and I mean, uh, so since we only have 30 seconds, that's the only the most direct way of talking about this. But I think it's it's much more about in trying to instantiate through different kinds of spaces, different kinds of practices, different kinds of programs and exhibitions, um, a, a, a an overall uh, con concept, idea, attitude um, f about you know what is art and what what can it do. Okay, so thank you for the steep dive as well, Philippe Tinari, for taking the time to answer the question. It was great to have you with us. Clementine will be with us for the next deep dive as well with Selvira Trigulova, whose sprint you are about to hear. So thank you very much for your time and enjoy the rest of the Mars program.